A 1500 kilogram car is approaching the hill shown at 15 meters per second when it suddenly runs out of gas. Neglect any friction. Can the car make it to the other or to the top of the hill by coasting? And what is the car's speed after coasting down the other side of the hill? All right. So let's just think about this for a second. Um, how do we know if the car is going to be able to make it to the top of the hill? We need to know um, the car has to go. How how much energy does it need to get to the top? So that is going to be its gravitational potential energy, which is going to be mgy. And we have everything for that. We have the mass, we have gravity, of course, and we have the delta y. To get to the top is going to be 5 meters. So if we plug that in, the mass is 1,500 kilograms times 9.8 times 5 meters. And that is equal to 68,600 joules for that car to get it to the top of the hill. But how much energy does the car have? Well, it's traveling at 15 meters per second. And we know kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. So let's plug that in. So we have 1 half of the mass of the car, which is 1,500 kilograms times its velocity of 15 meters per second squared. And that is equal to 157,500 joules. So yes, we have more than enough energy to get to the top of the hill by coasting. And in fact, there's gonna be energy left over. So for part A on mastering physics, the answer is yes, it will past the top and keep moving down the other side of the hill. Now they say, what's the speed when we get to the bottom of the hill? Or the answer is yes. Pass, top, and move down. Okay, so now for part B, what is the final velocity at the bottom after it's coasted down the bottom of the hill. So how much, so we know it makes to the top, but how much energy does it have left over? So we know we're gonna have, or let's just write out the whole equation and then talk about which one to cancel out. So we have one half mv initial squared plus mgy. We neglect friction, so that is equal to initial one half mv squared final plus mg y final okay so we're at the top of the hill here and or whoops sorry let back up a second we need to figure out how fast it's going at the top of the hill so we know what it's going initially at the bottom of the hill but initially let's say that this right here where the car started is y equals zero. So since that's y equals zero, it started at zero. So mgy all goes away to zero. And then we're trying to find what the speed of the car is at the top of the hill. So then we can figure out how fast it'll go at the bottom of the hill. So it's delta y final will be positive five. So let's solve for this V final right here. So let's move that over to the other side and divide by 1 half M. So we get 1 half MV initial squared minus MGY final all over 1 half the mass of the car and then square root that puppy equal to V final. So this top part, that's pretty logical. We're gonna say, well, whatever energy it has minus whatever energy it took to get to the top, and then we just isolated the rest to solve for V final. Makes sense, right? So V final, when we plug all that in, so one half the mass of 1500 times its initial velocity 
of 15 meters per second squared minus MGY of 1500 times 9.8 times 5 meters for delta Y. And that is all over 1 half of 1500. And then we take the square root of that answer. So at the top of the hill, at the top, the car is going, it is going 11.269 meters per second. But we don't want the top, of course, we know we want the bottom. So now let's do another one of these equations right here to solve for the bottom of the hill. So if we do that, we're going to say we have 1 half mb initial squared plus mgy initial equals 1 half m, not v, m, v final squared plus mgy final. Okay, so now, whoops, sorry. So now we're going to start at the top of the hill here. We'll start right here and end up here. So we're going to have an initial velocity, so this stays. We're going to start out with a um, with a y. I'm actually going to change this a little bit. Uh, no, I won't. I was just going to change where y equals 0 was to make this simpler, but I'll leave it. So we're going to start out with a y initial of positive 5. So that stays. Now what? You know, I, I am going to change it. Let's Now let's get rid of this. And let's say down here is y equals 0. So where it ends up is y equals 0. So now our y final is zero and we're looking for v final, of course. So we have now one half mv initial squared plus mgy initial, which in this case is 10 because we're saying the bottom of the hill is zero. And so he's five and five, 10, of course, you get that. And that is all over one half m square root, ooh, that was terrible, square root is equal to v final. So it looks pretty similar, right? The only difference really is our y initial changed and we're adding that to it instead of taking it away. So we have 1 half of 1500 times v initial, which now we our v initial at the top of the hill is 11.269 meters per second. We're going to add the mass of the car times 9.8 times the delta y, which we said was 10 meters. And that is all over one half the mass of the car. And then we take the square root. And that gives us an answer of 17.972 meters per second at the bottom of the hill and rounded for mastering physics gives us 18 meters per second.